I am Charmaine Warren. I am a Jamaican, I'm Jamaican born. I am the great granddaughter of Ida Boyd, granddaughter of Ruby Chapman, and daughter of Theophilus Warren and my 94 year old mother, Perlene Warren, living alive in Jamaica. I am a black woman. I live in Montclair, New Jersey with my husband, photographer and graphic artist, Tony Turner on the stolen land of the indigenous Lenape people. Our daughter, Ashe Turner, a black ballerina with locks, is going into her junior year at Boston Conservatory. I have locks that fall to my shoulders. I'm wearing large colorful earrings with cowrie shells and a yellow blouse. Behind me are photos of my family, a large plant, a lamp, and African masks. I am here with my friends Kimani Fowlin and Nick Hall because of my love for dance as a performer and because of all the gifts that I've received and will always share again because of dance. I turn it over now to Kimani. Hello, I'm coming to you all from the Lenape Stolen Land in Harlem. I live and create with my son Tamayo. I am in my dining room in a small apartment. Uh, I am wearing a red top. I have very short hair. Um, I am the granddaughter of a recently transitioned Lucille Madison, who was 104 years old. I teach because of her. My mother is Ann Fowlin. She is my creative and radical reminder. My father, Ronald Augustus Fowlin, is my dancing Caribbean bones. I dance because of them. I am overjoyed to be sharing this space with you all tonight, and thank you for being here. I will pass it on to the amazing Nick. Hi, I'm Nick Hall. I'm a Haitian American born to Sheila Hall and Curtins Hall. I was originally born in Brooklyn, and my family moved to Montclair, New Jersey, which is stolen Lenape land. Um, I'm a recent graduate of the Fordham Ailey BFA program. Um, I dance because it frees me, and I'm also the digital media coordinator for Black Dance Stories. Behind me is a TV monitor, a mantle, a mirror, and a door. I'm wearing a gray shirt, and I have very short hair. Passing it over to Charmaine. Unmute Charmaine. Self. I forgot that I muted myself. I'm here. Thank you again, and welcome. You all, we are here because of a dream. And Nick and Kimani said, yeah, let's do this. And I want to read and share what our dream is. And hopefully you've already been in, introduced to it, but I, just let me read. Our dance world was pummel, pummeled by, well, was pummeled by COVID-19 and black dance artists are finding ways to talk about life during this time. Our world was further turned upside down after horrible events ensued nationally and globally, bringing attention yet again to the need for the Black Lives Matter movement. Black dance artists have not been quiet since. Black dance artists have been doing the work. Black dance artists continue to do the work, including us here. To stay involved, this is what we decided to do. Black Dance Stories is one action, and we hope that you all will find an action. But this is one action, and we are committed to stay involved. Our mission as a community is that we are working together. We will work together to support, uphold, highlight, and celebrate Black creatives in the best way that we can. Tonight is our first of what we hope will be many stories told by Black artists in their own voices. Hooray, hurrah, ashe, ashe. Now, it's time for the first of the day. It's so exciting, it's so exciting, it's so exciting. All right, I would like to, wait, wait, wait. You two have more to say? You have more to say, right? Yes. All right, some housekeeping, y'all, I got too excited. A little bit more. Um, I just want everybody to know, and Nick, get ready to post stuff in the chat. So we have these amazing artists here, and they have links that you can find out about them, support them, donate, 
So please, in the chat, we will list the links, which is there now. And we also, because we're starting this huge mission that hopefully will go on forever, you can also support us if you can uh, at Venmo at Black Dance Stories. Um, so there's so many wishes that we would like. Um, I'm going to save some. I'll say some now and then save it for later because I don't want to take up too much time. But we'd love to get a website together. We want to have an ASL interpreter. They are expensive and we want to pay accordingly. We want to have Nick have an assistant and be paid for his amazing services. So just some of the, the wishes. So if you have time, money, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And I pass it on to Nick. Thank you. Just one note, um, throughout the duration of the chat, we ask that you keep yourselves muted and keep your cameras off. And then with that, I'm gonna pass it back to Charmaine. Yay. And now my excitement can be quieted down just a little bit. And those who know me know that that's not possible, but Kimani and Nick are gonna go bye-bye for just a minute, but they're here, we're all here. And I just wanna let you all know that the artists that were invited said yes without a fee. So please, if you can, drop a dollar, drop a dime, and or pass on their information to someone else who you know will. And now I'd like to bring Ayodele Cassell into the room. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, it's so great to be here. My name is Ayodele Cassell. Ayodele is um, a Yoruba name. It means joy has arrived. I love it so much. I am black and Puerto Rican. My father's black. My mom's Puerto Rican. I grew up um, in the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. I echo what you all said about being on stolen land and I honor um, the native people who were here before us. I um, am in the Bronx still, um, currently in a room with a black ch chalkboard behind me that I've never ever used. My hair, I have a lot of hair. It is very long and I always have it in a bun and a braid because I don't like being hot. Um, I am a wife to an incredible woman named Toria Beard who's an incredible artist and just being. Um, I am a daughter, a sister, a friend, um, a teacher, and also a student, a student of this art form of tap dancing that I love, love dearly. Um, and my pronouns are she, her, and I always have them here on my Zoom so that people um, know that. And Charmaine, um, and you know, I never turned down an invitation to bring wine to a meeting, so. Um, <laughs> so, cheers. I, so cheers to you, Charmaine. Um, may I, may I continue Charmaine or do, or, yes, you know, so hit it, bop, ba, da, da, bop, bop, boom, tell us your story. I, I want, I want to know what the cue, the exact cue is, um, <laughs> but, um, I just want to say I'm so honored. I'm honored to be here in Charmaine. I'm so, um, I love you. I love you so much. And I, and I, anytime that I, that I, I, I can tell you, I do. And I tell other people, you are a champion. Of, uh, of black artists, you're a champion of art, you've been a champion of tap dancing, you've been a champion for me. Um, I have to say, um, I just recently uh, finished my fellowship year at Harvard at the Radcliffe Institute. Just a few weeks ago, my, uh, my year there uh, was completed, but I have to connect like um, that to you as well because you wrote one of my recommendation letters, and um, and and I just I'm I'm just forever grateful. I also want you all to know that maybe perhaps my voice as a choreographer um, exists because of Charmaine. Um, no more me. No more me. No more me. But there's a point to this, Charmaine. There's a point. The point is is that I um, I came into tap dancing uh, a little bit later in life. I was 19 years old. I was uh, an acting major at NYU. Uh, when I was nine years old, I knew that I wanted to be an actress. That's what I wanted to do. And everything that I saw and experienced when I watched movies or, you know, um, when I would watch TV shows, I would look at that and I'd go, oh, like, that's what I'm going to do. I would look at it with that eye. And so when I was able to um, go to NYU for acting, it was like a, a kind of a dream come true. Now, um, I tell this story frequently, and I know some of you in the room, but I don't know a lot of you, and maybe a lot of you don't know me. So thank you, thank you, Charmaine, for the opportunity to 
um, to share that part of myself. But I saw tap dancing for the first time when I was 17 years old. Um, I was a senior in high school in the Bronx, and my English teacher, uh, she like, I think she was tired of teaching English, and she was like, I'm going to do my own class. And so she, <laughs> she did a course called History of the Movies. And so while I was there, I started learning about like Ingrid Bergman and all these like Catherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy. And then one time she showed us Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, and I remember like being like, oh my God, they're amazing. And I wanted to do that so badly, but I didn't grow up. Uh, in a dance studio. That wasn't my experience. I grew up like most kids in the Bronx, just dancing in your room, dancing to Janet Jackson, doing all the Rhythm Nation choreography, and, um, and or just dancing, you know, just dancing socially, you know, with my family and my friends. Um, but I was so intrigued by this art form that I would go and I would go to the library and I would rent their movies and I would like just try to teach myself to do what they were doing, you know? Um, but when I was 19, and, and I say that I, I was teaching myself, I, I was not great. It was just, I was just moving my feet on the ground, right? So, um, but when I was 19, I went to uh, NYU. My sophomore year, they offered ta uh, Tai Chi or tap, and I decided to take tap dancing. And um, I, it just like completely changed. I was so excited, because I'd be like, flap, boom, 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 boom. Like I'm just doing all the things. Uh, and uh, I thought, oh, I wanna, like, I'm going to be like Ginger Rogers finally, you know? And um, I just remember, and I'll just fast forward a little bit, because um, I tell this story often, um, and now I have, I have new perspective on it. But um, I met a dancer named Bakari Wilder, who was a freshman, and he really, like, um, we had a mutual friend, and they were like, oh, you should meet, because, you know, he's a tap dancer, and you're a tap dancer. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And so I remember going to... Faisal's and um, and to, to learn. Oh, to, no, I wasn't going to learn. I was going to jam because I was like the best in my class. So I was like, yeah, let's go do the thing. I'm going to put on my, my shoes that I got at Payless. I'm going to like, you know, just get into this thing. And I remember like putting on my shoes and like hearing hearing Bakari dance, like warm up. And I heard like, right. And up to that point, I had only heard Right? So I realized that I was really kind of out of my league. But anyway, but what he taught me immediately during that uh, moment, and I speak about this very often because I just want people to know and I don't want, I, I too want to stay connected to it. That moment was so vital for me because um, up until that point, I, even though I admired Ginger Rogers and I admired the, 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 how tap, how I perceived it um, to be like magical, I didn't really know. And I also felt like as a black and Puerto Rican woman, I was never going to be seen as a Ginger Rogers, right? And, um, and, uh, and that was it, was, it was, it was hard to feel like I want to take part in something, but nobody's ever going to really accept me in that, you know? And so when I learned that day from Bakari that tap dancing was a black art form. He said, do you know who Gregory Hines is? Do you know who the Nicholas Brothers are? Do you know who um, Jimmy Slide is? Do you know who Bill Robinson is? Do you know who Savion Glover is? And I was like, no. And so he's like, you know, tap dancing is not steps. It's, ex it's expression and it's communication. And it was born in this country and it's the expression of our people. And, did it, and I just like, my eyes opened and just opened my heart. It opened up everything. It, it opened my whole, my whole world because finally I realized that this thing that I was so like, you know, in love with and drawn to and you know even though i didn't know that much about it it was really you know rooted in you know ancestry that is like and a legacy that was mine you know and i vowed from that day on that i would do everything to learn everything about it and that not only that that i would um always present it and 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 present it and present myself with the utmost integrity in honor of my ancestors in honor of all those the progenitors of the form and that is something that i carry with me until this day it's been this year marks 24 years since i put on my or actually 25 years since i first put on my tap shoes and about 23 years since i started tap dancing professionally and um i'm obsessed with it and I love getting to not just share the, um, the actual dance of it, like just the, the, the virtuosity, the, the elegance of it, the sophistication, the, the rhythm, the power of it. I love that. 
but I also love talking about it. And I also realize that that is rooted in African tradition. The idea that we are that we pass this information down, you know, orally through stories that we that we honor our ancestors, that we honor the masters that came before us, that we honor Master Juba, you know, William Henry Lane, who was, you know, the first uh, tap dancer credited, you know, um, with this form, that we honor Bill Robinson, that we honor John Bubbles, that we honor these people, um, is to me, um, really anchors me in the form and it anchors me in my life. Um, you know, um, I feel like, uh, to go back to what I was saying, Charmaine, about um, you know, why you are responsible for my choreographic voices because two years after that particular, um, my class at NYU, about two and a half years or so, I started dancing with Savion Glover. He invited me to, he had just come off of Noise Funk, uh, which was a huge, huge hit in the 90s, bringing the noise, bringing the funk. And um, he, I don't know, I was, first of all, I was obsessed. I would go to all the jams. Like anything that was happening with, I would go to Swing 46 that Buster Brown was, you know, was running and I would go to, like Savion would have these, um, excuse me, these uh, jams at New York and Poets Cafe and he would open up the floor at the end, you know, and I was like, I, any, any chance that I got, I just put on my shoes and I would just go. And it was significant in that there was a lot of energy, really wonderful energy that was focused on the art form and on young people at the time. But it was also significant because it was really pre predominantly, the spaces were predominantly um, male, you know? And so the, you know, they were, it, the energy was high, it was really confident, focused, uh, you know, um, and a lot of my female friends who were tap dancing with me felt a little intimidated, you know, they didn't want to get in the, they didn't want to get in the ring, you know, but I just wanted to dance. I just wanted to dance. I was like, I just want to dance with the best, with the best. And so, um, so I would just put myself in those circles and then fast forward, we were dancing in Not Your Ordinary Tappers. We toured the world. We went to like every, everywhere from the White House to, you know, Jamaica, hey, shout out Jamaica, uh, Charmaine, <laughs> to like Amsterdam and like TV and like we were, we were just everywhere, everywhere. Um, and then I, I first did my, my very first uh, one woman show at, um, at Joe's Pub and at the Triad Theater. And it was just me exp uh, wanting to express my, uh, my culture, my, wanting, wanting to like uh, explore the, my curiosity of music. Cause you know, uh, we always dance to jazz which is like synonymous, synonymous with tap dancing. But I also had this like other, this Puerto Rican side of me, right? That was going, hey, what about like Ray Barreto? Or what about Eddie, Eddie Palmieri? And what about Tito Puente, you know, Celia Cruz? And so I wanted to like, exp kind of like start expressing that. And I, and I did um, with, a, I had like a 10 piece Latin band with me at Joe's Pub. We were like all like, they had this much space, as much space as the screen, 10 musicians and then me dancing. <laughs> but um, it was really, really great. And so then like three years later, I was used to improvisation. Tap dancing is super improvisational. We, we can like just show up and do our thing for hours. We know how to close down a party. We know how to, we'll stay forever. Like you're just, you know. And so um, I just remember about maybe four or five years, like I think it was like 2004, 2003, you were doing e-moves and you asked me, would I, you know, would I present something? And I didn't see myself as a choreographer. I just thought that I was a dancer who expressed in the moment who, you know, and, um, and you, you know, you, you said, no, you should, you should 100% do this. And I said, but what? You said anything. And <laughs> I said, okay. And it was my first time that I choreographed for other people. Um, and it was where Diary of a Tap Dancer was born, was at e in 2005. And, um, and it's significant. It's significant because um, it was also my uh, first, my attempt at telling stories like with words, um, with tap dancing in an effort to illuminate the depth and the humanity of the artists, um, you know, behind the form. Up until that point, I felt like, no I mean, Noise Funk was like genius. It was so impactful. Um, and I wanted to, and then, but, but it closed way too soon. It closed way too soon. It had like, I mean, I'm not quite sure, but I mean, if it, I know it was at the public for a certain time when it transferred to Broadway, it was only there for like two years, maybe perhaps. And, uh, and I just thought that my love of theater, because that was my entry point, 
my love of theater um, was seeping in and into my my artistic voice and I wanted to um, I was a little I was feeling unsatisfied with how people were perceiving the form a lot of audience members would say to me hey um, after the show they'd be like y'all were great it was so looked so hard you make it look easy or it was and they would only speak to the virtuosity of it and I felt like they were really sort of ignoring like why why we were dancing the way we were dancing as young black and you know latino people at the time you know like why we came into the room with that energy you know it was i felt for me it was our the focus was never on me when i was at nyu i was one of two people of color in my entire acting like my my studio at strasburg and all of the material that i was given was like um you know whatever like a lot of white authors basically Based, and at the time where diversity and inclusion wasn't even something that people were talking about, I just didn't see myself uh, being ever being accepted into that world. And, um, and it was really, really, uh, it was disheartening and um, it was frustrating. So for something like noise funk to like exist, for us to like really claim this, this form and to show up with everything that we were, you know, with our, you know, it was the 90s, so hip hop was like, it was like the best it ever was. Sorry, y'all, hip hop today is not what it was <laughs> in the 90s. But, you know, we went in there with like, you know, with full authenticity. And, um, and there, was a, there was a space for us. We made, you know, we made a space. And as a woman, I made a space for myself because everything I was seeing was male. And, um, and I, and it wasn't, uh, it was, disappointing but it wasn't discouraging right i want because i just i feel like i'm like always been like a radical optimist and so i was like oh i don't care that there are no women in here i'm just gonna go i'm just gonna go in yeah i don't care i'm from the bronx i used to fight boys listen i went to i used to in elementary school my teachers used to call me muhammad ali right because i was just getting into so many fist fights with my they called my um <laughs> my grandparents they were like uh you have to do something because she's acting crazy anyway so i just and i'm from the bronx like i was like no 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 no. i'm not afraid of anybody i'm just gonna go in and you know and, and kind of knock this out but um anyway i was just saying that like i really understood i'm going on tangents um but i what, what i wanted to say was that when i got the opportunity to um to present my work and i think that i've done it consistently since is um my need or my desire to reveal more about ourselves through the dance through you know so my dance is an expression of everything that i am it's an expression of my identity um as a black and puerto rican woman it's an it's, it's an expression of my culture it's an expression of my love for being alive it's an expression for um my respect and my uh for for the for my ancestors it's a it's a it's it's an expression of uh hope for the people who are watching it, the young people, so that they get into it. It's an expression of, I mean, I, it's just, to me, it's, it's everything. It's, it's, it, it's an expression of my gratitude. It's an expression of my gratitude that, that the universe, that God, however you want to refer to him, or her, <laughs> you know, sent this to me. You know, because by all definitions of how, uh, or logic, you know, there's, I, I wouldn't exist. If it wasn't, you know, like most people would say, well, you shouldn't you be dancing? If you know, like, I guess ballet dancers, you have to start when you're very, very young, you know? Um, you know, I came into it at 19. I was, uh, it took over my life in a way that I could not have, uh, would never have um, expected, you know what I mean? Um, but um, everything that I do is, is, is for, the, for revealing, revealing who we are while we can. Because what I realized, um, you know, life happens and for, as artists and maybe just as, just as humans, we, we stop ourselves sometimes from, from following our impulses and from, uh, um, yeah, just, I, I told myself so many things. Oh, maybe somebody else can tell this story. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe what if people don't like it? Blah, 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 blah. And then a whole lifetime goes by and you have not done anything with all of those impulses that are given to you so that you can share, especially as an artist, you know? And so um, I realized that, you know, time is a gift. Time is a gift. I saw a plane crash. In like it was like in, I don't know 2015 or something the, the pilot drove that plane into into the mountains and I said you know something if that was me right then um, 
going down without me having had the courage to uh, to just share my heart while I could, then that would be, that's worse. So I vowed that from that moment on that I was gonna like, you know, just go, you know, balls to the wall, <laughs> just <laughs> just everything. And um, I, I wanna say one more thing, and I don't know what the, what the time is like, but I, I'll just say that um, the other thing that really drives me um, as, a, as an educator, as an artist, is um, my wanting to um, a give voice to my own story and also give voice to you know the women too that came before me I always talk about them I bring them into every space that I have Jenny Lagon, Lois Bright, Louise Madison, Cora Lored, Juanita Pitts, Alice Whitman you know and and I'm you know baby Edwards and Edwina Salt Evelyn and, and and you know and Jewel Pepper Welch and all of these women and I bring them into my space because these were black women that were in the game with those those guys that we learned about from you know in the 20s to the 20s through the 50s and they didn't have the same opportunity that I have been given and I used to feel bad about that because I felt like wow like I feel guilty that I relatively this has been much easier and I realized that I can't change the past but I'm gonna bring them into every space that I have right in every space that I can and I always bring them in um, because I realize that if we don't take control of our narrative right if we continue to allow other people to tell our stories to um, to basically write whatever they want and how, however they perceive us, if we don't take that power back, then we're, we end up almost nowhere. I, um, I saw like a, a tap history book where they, t they spoke about like me in this continuum of tap dancing and I was so grateful to A, be included, but B, I realized that that is not the total sum of who I am. It's not the total, it doesn't, it doesn't speak accurately to my heart, to my investment, to my love, you know what I mean, for this form and for my own life. And so I decided from that point on that I am not letting anybody else tell my story because I will not end up like all of these women that I, that I had to like search and dig and dig and dig to find their, you know, their, their information. And so I, I feel like I can do, it's like a double, double duty. I feel like you get to know who I am. And then by seeing me, you get to acknowledge them because they were doing it before I even thought about putting on a tap shoe, you know? And, um, and that's just really, really, you know, really important to me. Um, and I don't know, I'm just, I'm just proud. I'm happy, I'm happy to now get to uh, share work, like just tap dancing. I'm glad and happy that I get to share my experience like in this kind of forum as well i feel like tap dancing is magic i feel i call us superheroes i feel like we should be infiltrating in all spaces we should be doing ted talks we should be you know <laughs> you know on talk shows we should be doing just any anywhere that there is a, uh you know this kind of a space I, I think that we should be occupying it you know um and we should make that happen yeah we should make, hey, we, did you drop dormant? We are doing it. We are doing it, yeah. I mean, and my peers, I mean, I didn't even go to my, my own peers. There's so many, Dermisha and Star and Star Dixon. I mean, we're, we're, we're out there. It's so much, we're in, a, in, in such a rich uh, space right now, you know? Yeah. Uh, and and I'm, I'm really proud of that, yep. Yeah, and you sure you didn't want to share that thing that you tried before? Oh, well... I was gonna. I mean, I don't know what the what the time is like. It, it is. Well, it's, it's time to bring your friend in, but yeah, that's a, that's okay. We don't, we don't have to share that. We could, that could be another right. time. Okay. <laughs> another time. Ah! Thank you all for listening. Thank you and thank you for allowing me to share. I really, really appreciate it very much. And the chat has been going crazy. You go, girl. Tell it. Tell your own stories. So on and so forth. The chat's been going crazy. Uh -huh. Well, y'all, it's time. It's time to, to wait. Let's take a drink and bring in our friend. Cheers. Cheers, Stephanie. Cheers, Stephanie. Stephanie, where are you? Mm -hmm. hey, okay, team. Ah! Okay. And a bada bada. Okay, team. Okay, team. All right, you I two am. can have at it for a little bit. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Um, hey, my name is Stephanie Batten Bland. Hey, everybody. And I am down, um, I'm down here in Eastern Virginia in a 
it's just this interesting place, right? There's a places have heritage and if you don't call them out, things get lost, right? Um, this is an interesting land because it's a part of my mother's family land. So there's a lot of original, let's say original European settler history here that took out an original Powhatan history here. And then with also, with, with also within that, there's, there's the people that my family owned that is in here, right? So it's a, it's a really amazing place to be in and to, uh, to navigate, move through, and to still be able to tell stories of today, which is sort of what I love to do. So that's where I am. Cheers. Stephanie, um, one of, this is our time, right, Charmaine? We get to like kind of talk. Uh, one of the things that I was reading about in your very illustrious bio and, and body of work <laughs> is your connection as well to like to theater and to um, just storytelling. And I wonder, is, um, is that something that came when, when did that aspect come into your, your, like your artistry? Did, was it always there or, you know, what, what was the impulse to, to start to present work in that way? Oh, it was totally accidental. It's the last thing I ever wanted to do. Um, I, I love, uh, I love the accidents of life. I think somehow we know when we're supposed to open a door, when we're supposed to run away from it, when we're supposed to kick it in. And I think right now is a kick in moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a kick in moment with the hand on the knob and I'll decide when I'm gonna close it. Um, I say that um, theater and storytelling has always been a part of my life. Um, but it's funny, the people that decide to take chances on you and who are the ones that say, okay, hey, what is it that you're doing? And um, for me, it happened to be at the Paris Serpa Comique um, and it was for the Josephine Baker story. And we were hiring, uh, the opera was hiring an enormous amount of Americans um, as Katrina had just um, really had just wrecked havoc here. And um, the French community was going into New Orleans in different aspects and, uh, and really bringing um, employment and housing grants to the area. And the opera, one of its main goals, as it had a, a jazz -a -feel director at that moment, uh, Jerome Savary, he was making an ode to Josephine. Um, and in France, whenever that's done, the, her family is very involved and the foundation is very involved. And I was brought in, my agent sent me in a, to go in, to go and audition. And, um, you know, I did and I sang. And at some point um, he asked me, you know, what was that bit that I just did? And I was like, oh, well, you know, when I was doing the dishes this morning and, um, you know, Maxine told me that I needed to go in today that, you know, I, I had to think of something and I was using, I was using a piece that not many people know of by June Christie, who's an, uh, not, not our most common uh, jazz singer uh, when we think of jazz singers and she's also Caucasian and uh, I did that on purpose to see, you know, tonality wise if they would hear what I was bringing in and um, he said, oh, okay, you did that this morning in your kitchen and I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, so what would you do with 30 days? And I was like, 30 days? I don't know, make a whole piece. And he said, okay, great. So now you're a head choreographer. And I was like, oh, I don't know if that's actually the order in the, okay, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. And um, I got to work with some absolutely extraordinary, extraordinary uh, choreographers and we were a whole team and um, singers and dancers. And one day while we were, one day while we were just like warming up or something, he, he rolled by and, and he said, um, he said, Stiffy, you know, I see that you're doing this funny thing that you do when you warm up. What is that? And I was like, well, yeah, I, I'm warming up. It's floor work. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, I give you the opera house on a Monday, call your friends, do something, but you have to respect and honor what is this opera house, right? Because it's the opera comique. It's not Bastille, it's not contemporary opera, and it's not Garnier. It's not the classical opera with the, with, the, with the ballet. And I said, okay, to honor this house, this is the popular house, this is the house of the people. And in order to make a house of the people, then I'm more than happy to simply tell my story. And my story is one that intersects, it's messy, it doesn't have a straight line, it has, um, but I know where to put my hand on that knob. And I said, okay, I said, I'll give you this story. Um, and so I made a, a, an evening length piece called Paris, uh, Paris La Métis, and um, 
and let's hang out like wet clothes because I was listening a lot to Andre right then, right? And, um, and I just couldn't help but um, I enjoyed myself to such pieces and I realized that um, I guess the, the voice and the love in telling stories about connections would offer not just me, but maybe others to look at why we decide to connect. And if we decide to look at why we connect, then we also decide and we have to look at why we decide not to connect. And to look at those two decisions, well, that opens up a lot of conversations for people anywhere. And that just started this thing. It just kind of started this thing and then it just kind of kept going. And then I decided to come home about, it's been like nine years now and it just keeps going. Stephanie, do you have a question for Ayo before she goes? Because she'll come back later on. Absolutely. A... Okay, so I went to high school with someone that you worked with. Okay. And I'm wondering if you can think of who it is. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> somebody I worked with, I mean, male or female? Female. We just spoke about her towards the end. We just were speaking about her towards the end. Was, so oh. I mean, uttered her name. Oh, goodness. Was it, um, was it Dormisha? Dormisha. It was? Oh, get out. <laughs> oh, connections. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Dormisha is, uh, you know, that is power right there. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So, sweet, sweet Ayodele, you all, we didn't say this, but we're going to leave time for Q&A with both of them. So you can start dropping questions in the chat. But Stephanie's going to take over. Wait. And Ayodele is going to go, but this is the way. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Tell us your story, Mama. Is it okay if I talk about right now, Charmaine? Because I feel like that's the that's where I am right now in this story. I'm in a story of 16 weeks of no childcare. I'm in a story of 16 weeks of exhaustion. And yet um, there are due dates. There are, um, there are things that seem to need to be done on times that just don't seem to have anything to do with uh, the rest of a life. And um, I can't help but wait and and I feel that this moment is not just the moment to look at uh, the melanin apparatus but the apparatus that takes and keeps everyone at bay and for the for the for the glory of a very sh of a very I'm gonna say short few right and so as a as a as a maker as a doer as you know as a lover as a person I, I'm really looking forward to the support and waiting to hear um, how the support's supposed to come back in. So all these lovely deadlines and things that people need, they just need so much right now, especially right now. Folks need just so much. Um, I'm, um, yeah, I'm tired. And I also noticed my filter's gone away. And, and I, think, um, I think I've always been someone that negotiates spaces well with people. I'm quite, I'm often brought in because I might not yell at you in the way one might be afraid that I might yell at you, but actually I do. You just aren't noticing it. You're not noticing that the yell is coming. My hair might be long like your daughter's, but it has a curl that snaps back and that's going to come in a way that you hear. And um, so I guess there's, there's that that's also, um, folks need to do work. And I don't need a text to hear about uh, how much I'm loved. I mean, I, you know, I love that. I appreciate that, of course. But um, I think there's work that can be done. And, um, and if we're going to break down, if we're going to break down the structures, then um, we just need to call things out, call out, call out how the globe was populated, because it's, it's how the globe is populated that is still maintaining why dance is seen in particular manners and why these, these damn subcategories uh, are still money is still being made off of them and it's about money so if we're not going to educate and insist that funders and oh gosh i'm going all over that it funders and audience members are ready to support celebrate purchase be a part of stories of today uh, then i don't know what the hell this moment's about because it's been done over and over again and i am so honored by the people who have made it uh available for me to come in like this right uh I unabashedly do not uh, fear away from, um, well, no, I'm actually done at six and no, I don't do that on the weekend because I should have the right to that. And this uh, mixing American, oh no, we do everything everywhere. No, we don't. 
And how, how rude of you to think that I would. I don't think you do. I do believe at 6 p.m. come Friday, you're off golfing or whatever is going to, you know, I don't want to, you know, be bad on the golfing. Um, but, you know, it's, um, it's, yeah, I'm kind of there. I'm there. I'm, um, I'm in a, an area that is absolutely beautiful, that um, has raging Confederate signs and flags. And um, I notice who decides to wear a mask, what they look like and who doesn't. And the behavior, the behavior of who doesn't wear a mask and how they move through uh, the space around those that don't wear their mask. And it's, it's very humbling to be here. And, and I'm also very lucky because I get to be with my mother and um, we get to have all of these generations here on this land uh, in, a, in a present day vision of it. And I, I also love that. And, but yeah, um, I, let's, let's see where it's going. And it doesn't need, I'm also not really interested in the hearing like this kind of hopeful thing. I think work doesn't have to always be hopeful. I think work has to be real. And um, I don't think the, the, the sweat and the backward that goes into digging and shoveling should be, oh, because my, this new hashtag statement is going, to, is going to mean that my diversity grant is going to, uh, give me a break. Um, do it because you want to do it and do it because you know you actually should have done it because people have been screaming for it forever. So the, the years and the centuries of rage and, and the roar is, I guess, why, um, why the filter is no longer necessary because I don't need to have it anymore. And honestly, I wish I never had had it. And, um, but I am grateful to my parents that they allowed, to, you know, they, they allowed and they also supported me in such a way that I was a, that I could navigate through so many spaces, right? And I appreciate that. And I also really am deeply thankful that I'm hearing words coming out of my daughter's mouth right now that are just so inspiring. You know, they're, they're, they're colorings. They're not the subcategories, they're colorings. And, um, you know, cause brown people make peach people, didn't you know? Right. So, um, yeah, so that's where I am. Um, I think also what's been very interesting and what is speaking to me a lot right now, because I do work a lot and I work with some extraordinary people that are, that are theatrical, that are movement based and that are in the States and that are also in France. And we've had the opportunity through this pandemic uh, and through this moment to also explore, like, how do we connect through performance? And that's been, that's been really rewarding and touching and humbling to see. Um, what is it that the screen can provide? What is it that access to space uh, offers and, and requires in terms of behaviors? I can't, I can't help but keep going back to behaviors. If these 16 weeks have taught me anything, it's the, it's, it's the behaviors that are, being, that are learned, that are ingrained. And if I can just move through space more and more with an erect spine, that verticality should be just as valuable as when I decide to curve and move my hips, right? So I'm speaking about verticality, not from some aesthetic, uh, balletic uh, point of view, but in terms of simply, I can take power with my pecs forward and I can also own power when my hips swirl. And if we can just ad address that both of these are now in a form and function space, and that form and function we all need, then I can offer access to anyone because I'll be able to tell my story to anybody. Wait, wait, are you finished talking? You have more to say? Wait, let me get my glass again. I hope everybody out there is, is Wait, Dare just said hydrate, and somebody said drop the mic, and somebody said preach. And <laughs> oh my gosh! Mm. So listen, do we bring Ayo back? Are you done? Do you want to share more? Whatever. You know I'm so conversational. 
I know. Bring, absolutely. Bring bring her back in, right? Come yeah. on, Ayo Dele. Come on back. I'm back. Yes. I gotta put some more in here. Yeah, put some more wine in there. <laughs> <laughs> there it oh, is. Oh, y'all are fabulous. Mm -hmm. so, so, do you have some that you all, you two want to talk about, or can we start? with the questions. But you know, wait, 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 wait. There's been a lot of shout outs. Kimani, can you come in and, and give some shout, some of the shout outs? And then we'll we'll dig for questions. Cause y'all, I know Stephanie, you're conversational. <laughs> and I know Ayodele, we could talk all night. Kimani, any oh, shout outs? Yes, we have uh, Dance New Jersey was here. Dance New York, what? Kate Mattingly, what? <laughs> hey, Redding Jones, what? I am so grateful. Adonna Jones, yes, yes. Mm. And so many others. Nick, you want to shout out some? Wait, uh, I, can I just drop some names too? Ava oh, Yaw was Ava Yaw is here. What? A lot of people, yes, people from the BAM team is here. I'm trying to remember some. Oh, Halifu, Halifu is here. Nick, go ahead, go ahead, Nick. I see Jennifer Pion, I see Morgan McDaniel, Samara Steele. Um, that's all I'm seeing right now. Yes. Thank you, thank you. I know, Ava is a serious champion. And CDSM, they're here. All right, so if you put your video on, go back out for a second, because we're just, we're going to chat a little bit more, Stephanie and Ayodele and myself. We're, Please drop questions. Yes, I please was just drop saying, questions, please. Please put some questions in the chat that we can ask. Okay, we're we're leaving you to your discussion. All right. <laughs> Thanks. All right, I'm going to try to find some of these questions, but you all start talking. Blah 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 blah. Hey, Kimani. Yeah, high school. I mean, yeah. that's what I love. You know, we used to we used to we used to drive to school together. Oh wow! Are you still in touch? God, it hasn't been years. I mean, years. I did like a couple of shout outs when I first moved back. It's just one of those beautiful things to see, to see, you know, people that you, you've known and that you've loved throughout life just become such owners of space, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I think of when I, when I think of her, when I see her, when I, you know, just even, what was it? She was just at, wasn't she just at the, 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 the Joyce, um, yeah, we were. This with was Cam with Camille. Were you there too? Yeah, we were. This whole thing that just a really important year at the Joyce because it was the yeah. first that three artists were three tap artists were presented. You know, mm -hmm. it was either nobody or one. You know, and <laughs> you know, and and this was the first year that Dorisha got a season, I got a season, and then Michelle Dorrance got a season. And I will. I can I just say with this one thing, the only reason. Well, the primary reason, not, not the only, but the primary reason I think I got a, a season there was because of Ava. Because Ava Ya Santawa uh, held a panel discussion, uh, and I'm sorry, a long table discussion at Gibney about two years ago, it was January, I believe. And she invited me to the table. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna, I'm this, I have the mic and I got that mic and I was like, you know, I'm gonna talk about the, these inequities that I see. I'm gonna talk about mm -hmm. why this is a black art form. But people that are being presented are white. Why is that? Why is that that people like Dormisha, myself, like my peers who are brilliant, brilliant artists and, um, you know, are not receiving the same opportunities? Why is, like, I just was like, just throwing this out there. And it just so happened that Aaron Maddox, who's the new, uh, program, um, I don't know what the, his exact title is, but you know he's a director, I think. Director, director program um, was in the was in the audience, and he it, whatever I said resonated with him, and he and he um, called. He sent me an email like, "Can you come into the office and talk to me about your work?" And da 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 da, da and then he offered me a season there, but you know. And, and it's but it spoke to because um, I just felt like we have nothing to lose. Like why are we why are we being silent when we see these like inequities happening? Like we have to, you know, silence. You know, doesn't protect anyone, right? Your silence will not protect you. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to um, just voice that, and and that's what happened. So it, because of Ava, we ended up at the Joyce. 
And it was wow. Ava is a champion. It was a and cha we were both in we were both in e moves. I might have missed that w w or earlier, but I did. Did you all talk about that? I mean, like that's that's where I mean I feel like you know Eva and I mean and Charmaine. I mean it's to bring this together to reach out mm -hmm. is you you've got you've got these you've got this this little cloud of ideas that always seem to they always come true. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a blessing to be within that. Consistently. Yeah. Consistently. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Rain is, you know, she's always asked. That's why, you know, whenever you call, I'm like, what can I do? I feel like I'm forever, forever indebted, you know, um, because That's of right. that. Does she ever do this to you? She'll sometimes call. She'll just be like, it's coming. SVB, it's coming. <laughs> we'll so talk in a couple of weeks. And then I'll call her and I'll, and I'll say, Charmaine, she said, I know. <laughs> How does she know everything? How does she know? <laughs> I don't always know, but well, let me ask this question because it, this, will, this will help. Hold on, wait, I just lost it. Mm -hmm. Hold on. As black dance creatives, what was one of the most powerful affirming moments in your career as incredible female artists of color? Hmm. Affirming moments. Hmm. Affirming moments in the career. I mean, I sort of feel like the first bow was that. The very first time I took a bow as a maker. Um, you know, you feel all the people that have come before you, the people that are there because you are there because of them, and the people that are, that are, a, a, present during the present tense. Um, I would say it was the very first bow and holding the hands of the team uh -huh. and, uh, and feeling the weight, uh, not the weight of payday, but like feeling the weight, right? Feeling the weight of, um, of, of offering a, a direction for friends and a group to follow. And that we all seem to, we all seem to agree on that direction. Yeah. What about you, Ayodele? Um, I mean, I think that I have, I think I have two, 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 to two times or two moments, maybe, of course, just being um, invited um, to the table with my male peers, like back in the 90s, that, you know, when there were no roles or nobody was really coming for us in that way. So to get the opportunity to, you know, be myself and dance with the greatest has been amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm the second time that I think was really affirming came much, much later. In 2016, I wrote a piece called While I Have the Floor. It was a seven minute piece where I had a voiceover and I danced and I premiered at City Center, at New York City Center, as part of Encore's Off Center. And I remember it was us, Jon Jonathan Groff and Sutton Foster were the headliners of the show. And I, um, I, I performed the piece and 2,400 people at the end of it like stood up start they they would not stop clapping i walked off stage jonathan groff had to come back to get me because he couldn't start his next number and so oh, wow. to, take another, to take another bow and it was so overwhelming but what felt so like affirming was that i was myself i was the most authentic i had ever been i was speaking about, about like my love for it i was talking about racism i was talking about sexism i was talking about my experience i was talking about my ancestors and i was dancing how i danced in a suit you know not giving into any stereotypes and that was really fantastic that felt really good you know so there was another one you said just like existing just existing being able to exist and dance at all <laughs> you know um that is number one and then number two was that particular moment i'm sure there. <laughs> Just the ones I, I love that you said that because that made me think of that made me think of uh, the creative self and then there was um this moment that was also like the the business self which is something that uh, i i watched you know my parents and their neighborhood struggle with as the gentrification of soho occurred you know but this i feel like the next one of the moments and this is not too long ago but i i i just did not accept the price and um, I just said, no, it's, uh, it's just really not worth it. And, um, and somehow that price just suddenly doubled. Hmm. And I yeah. said, huh, 
And I said, well, you're almost there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have two more. Mm -hmm. One is from Halifu or Samara. Yay, Halifu! Woo -woo 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 -woo! It's for Stephanie. Is your dance teacher guideline available to the public? My guideline. Dance theater. Dance theater guideline. I got I haven't I haven't finished my book yet. Yeah. Okay, good. So it's coming. It's but it's coming. coming. How, okay, this is a big one. Yikes. How do you navigate white supremacy through your dancing? How does it show up? Wow, this both both for both of you. Yeah, I think I'm just subversive through by nature. So I, I don't think there's any part of me that is not in constant conversation with the construct and the apparatus. Mm. Um, I'm within it. I have, uh, not only have I existed in supremacist uh, spaces, I've thrived in them mm -hmm. in the way that I'm, I've been able to push casting call definitions and redefine them. Um, Sometimes that takes a lot of educating, a lot of trust building, and a lot of, um, why don't you just take a chance, um, speaking as a performer, um, take a chance and, and, and watch what I'll do. I'd say as a, as a maker, I would uh, look at, uh, I think the complexities, and thankfully the complexities that exist in movement itself, in rhythm itself, in how we question and how we question narrative uh, through physicality is wrought in exposure. Um, but I just think the fact that I'm just there and that I walk in by by point of being who I am, mm -hmm. I'm there. Yeah. By being there, I'm saying that I'm normal. If you say that I'm normal, then I have the right to exist just like anybody else right. mm -hmm. within the apparatus. I might even own it one day too. Actually, we already do. Hey, I love that. Uh, I feel like I can be nobody but myself, and I'm very clear about who I am. And um, and I I try very well. Not try. I am always centered in that, and so in every place that I show up, because I realize that's the only way that I win. Um, and by win. I um, whether somebody likes what I do or likes my dance or not, that is not up to me. And I don't really care what actually anybody thinks, <laughs> um, I mean, in a sense, you know, um, because my intention is always to be, um, you know, to lead with, uh, I don't know, to lead with my love and to lead with authenticity. So I just feel like, um, and if can't get with that, then that's okay. But like, for example, heading into the Joyce, you know, I was very aware that that audience is you know, very white. And also what has been presented consistently there has been danced through the, how, you know, specifically I think about Michelle Dorrance, who's a friend of mine and I love her dearly. Um, but that's what I do, I do not dance like Michelle and I don't want, and I was um, adamant uh, when we were creating the show at the Joyce for the, in the fall to not give into any expectations of what tap dance should look like. And also, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what I should look like. So I went in there just really with, with this hair bun. I had an extra bun and I had some suspenders and I had my shoes and I just was myself. And we programmed something that was just spoke to me and that's it. And if you love it, great. You know, and if you don't, that's okay too. Mm, mm. Do you, do you both think that post COVID you'll have to navigate white supremacy differently? Post-COVID. <laughs> yeah, right? Go ahead, laugh, Stephanie. Especially gigs and oh, stuff. Oh, man. I'm just wondering. The, I think what the moment that, you know, what the moment is, is offering us, and I just want to say stop offering because it's just, it's right now. It's that, and I'm, I'm particular with the organizations that I'm working with right now, right? You know, I'm looking at ABT. You know, these, these, uh, they're, do, they're, go, they're going through a lot right now, aren't they? Little bit. Ballet is going through a lot. Everyone's going through a lot and good, good. 
as if, you know, this is the part that I signed on to when I said I'd be a part of the Women's Movement Initiative. These were the questions of why, why would I come? Why would I come to watch a few folks uh, come into the second act for, for a certain amount of minute time in the second act? Now, um, again, where is the risk taking in, um, where is the risk taking in the stories of today and letting those be valuable and educating again the audience and the funders that those are stories that can be sold and can enter into their into the box office. Um, so what do I think would be what's different about this now is and I can't wait to start hearing this. I'm, I can't wait to start hearing the oh yes we need her but I just don't know if she's ready yet because I know that's just another code as well. And to see who is going to be coming and making it through the codes, and um, I've started to hear how process and improvisation that really was very um, negative, um, in in uh, is now starting to become positive. And I'm like, oh, is that the new flexed hand? Is that the new flexed hand um, in 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 classical vernacular that now process or improvisation? Are, these are tools right, that right. we can now uh, appreciate. And uh, when did we never not? Um, <laughs> Uh, again, you know, was it that just that like vertical improvisation was more uh, uh, it was more celebrated than the round? Uh, but I still believe that you ask for shoes to go off, right? Um, yeah. So I, I yeah I <clears throat> let the story let the story write as uh, as we move through it. But I think now that um, the, there is no filter, then I think just true just true conversational questions. And the rapport and the back and forth can really occur. And isn't that what we all want anyway? Because that is what's going to bring the genre up and forward and uh, allow us to not work on Saturdays and Sundays unless we were uh, in the theater. Right, right. Mm. Ayodele, post COVID, navigating. Um, what I would like to see, and I don't know if this answers the question exactly, but it makes me think of this is what I think of when, when I hear that. I'm what I'm happy about this moment um, with not just not just with the COVID, but just uh, with you know these calls for justice for the murders of of our people are how I've seen my community of tap dancers really claim um, the form back and say like you know, this retelling of his, uh, enough of this like old storytelling of these origins of tap like enough with giving Irish people uh, the Irish influence equal weight as it relates to the, you know, uh, the origins of the form. I think like we're st we are starting as a community to, to, to claim that, that back, that narrative. And then also I, what I'm interested in is seeing other dance forms acknowledge us because we have not been acknowledged. And I feel like that's a form of white supremacy that many black dancers of color shunned tap dancing that they have looked down upon, looked down on it. I mean, you know, and just not really got, you know, I don't know, given the, the, the weight of it, the art of it, the history of it, claiming it as your own, you know, and, and defending it and defending us and wanting us in your, in your spaces, you know, like sometimes I go to some of these award shows, these dance award shows, and I'm like, who are, like, what, what's happening? Like, where, first of all, where, where's our representation, you know? Um, I don't know. Did I say too much? But... <laughs> Stephanie! <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, that's serious. That, I have, to, I question that, you know? Mm -hmm. I would love to see now, post-COVID, post, you know, this revolution that we're in, this moment, like, you know, let's, let's stand for us, stand for our culture, stand for our roots, stand for our, you know, our existence, our uh, contributions, our legacy, you know, even... don't get me started. Like, I mean, I can go on forever. I don't want to like, but you know what I mean? Like, let that shift. We're here. I would he, I, hey. jump on that with space. Yes, that, yes. That, I, that how we use space is also going to be a part of our new now. Mm -hmm. because we've always used space in a non proscenium uh, format and manner, right? And I'll never forget the first time I went and I saw jazz at Lincoln Center and I felt so awkward sitting, facing in this one direction. Um, and it felt so absolutely yeah. not natural, especially coming from my, my father, right? And, and coming from- just, And your father you know, is? Ed Bland, was, cry, cry was, jazz. Ed Bland. Say it again, one more time. Ed Bland. Mm -hmm. 
I believe today is one of his birthdays, which is another story because he oh. has two birthdays depending on which, upon which part of the hospital declared him as a uh, first generation after the racial apartheid, right? So the um, so the space, me, the use of space. Yes, because there's something, and I understand how the proscenium became to this format and what that frontality uh, obliged and offered to a particular uh, class and why that why it became so important within the business. I go back to the business. The business of large is no longer as successful as I think it, uh, we wanted it to be, right? The business of small and medium is going to flourish. It always has flourished, but I think now we're going to see that the small, the medium, the spaces that allow you to see in 360, the spaces that allow you to walk around, dive in, smell, decide you how close you want to be or not, and that is, that is a space that came from far away. That's a, a site and a way of viewing and, and participating mm -hmm. that, um, that's our space actually. That's and right. That, yeah, and, and that to me, the celebration of the small and the medium is also a part of the new now, which is a part of the COVID and a part of the movement and it has always been a part of us. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have another question. It is, hang on. It's from Samara. What would you say was the best piece of advice that has been offered to you as Black women within the dance community? That's a big one, right? Hmm. Bethany? That, that I wasn't going to fit in and to know what that fitting meant or not meant. And I love that. Wow, so prepare yourself. Hmm. Yeah, and I was very, very young, very, very young when that was said to me. Mm. I'm thinking. Thinking. I and mean, that's all just ownership of identity and just being good with who you are. And ho hopefully that there's a teacher that recognizes that you have the ability to be good with who you are and in who you are. And just to support that with words that might allow you to understand that at that whatever age that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. When I, I've gotten this question before, not necessarily related to being a woman, but um, just the best advice in general. And I remember when I was young, like in the dance, like because I started late, so I was I felt like I was playing catch up, you know. And I remember Jimmy Slide. We were at Carnegie Hall doing a tribute to the Nicholas Brothers, and um, and I was like. You know, we were about to go on. I was practicing, uh, practicing furiously in the wings, and Jimmy said to me, he goes, he just comes up to me, he goes, don't compete. And then he walked up, and Jimmy, if you know Jimmy Slide, he was a man of very few words, you know? And, um, and I looked at him, and I was like, what is, like, am I, like, what am I doing? Like, yeah, was I doing something wrong? And, um, and, then I, and we would, like, nod, and years later, we'd still nod in acknowledgement, because I got it. And he was saying, don't don't even worry, like just do what you're doing. You know, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Just, you know, concern yourself with just like, you know, be integral and just, yeah, just do the work, Renee. Just do the work and everything else will take care of itself. And I gotta tell you, thank you, Jimmy, because it really truly has, you know? Wow, that was kind of like the same thing. Mm -hmm. Those two, mm -hmm. right? Now, uh, wait, I, I just have to read this one. <laughs> Is from Ava Yah. People who don't get Ayodele and Stephanie, I don't know what to say about them. <laughs> Ava, I love you. <laughs> oh, love her. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Oh of course. Of course. Of course, and so, uh, no one ever would be able to handle that advice. Also from Ava, <laughs> it's it's coming it's coming in. Somebody said, "Yup, facts." Hashtag facts. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna flip it the other way and ask, "What would you two? What advice would you two give young professional black women coming into this crazy field of dance that we love so much? We love this, right?" Love it. Um, I would say, well, what I, which is what I did, which, which was immerse yourself in the, um, like educate yourself, educate yourself so you, you know, so that you can come with your receipts when people challenge you or, you know, um, educate, you know, practice, practice. 
yeah. you know, stay top of your game. Like work with, you know, work with integrity, be authentic, stay away from trends. Yikes. Um, <laughs> just, you know, follow the, follow your impulses, you know? Um, I think the nice thing about tap dancing um, in our culture is that we are asked to cultivate our, uh, um, our, our, voice, our rhythmic voice very early on through the practice of improvisation. So we are really constantly in the search of who we are, what we have to say, what does that look like? And I think that um, don't try to be anybody else, be you, you know, don't worry about anybody else, be you, <laughs> you know, and trust that you can never fail. You will never, ever, 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 ever fail. Okay. Okay. Stephanie? Think, yeah, I think what concerns me right now is um, how many new subcategories I'm starting to hear mm. about um, as we're speaking to um, people that are coming out of conservatory with the market is, is not offering people. And the subcategorization really just, again, makes me think that the, we're still empowering the structure and the apparatus. So really, to me, the, the only way that you can beat that, I would just say that you're seen mm. and know that you're seen. And if you know you're seen, then no one can stop you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I know I'm not just quoting Okwi, but Okpo Swahili, she's, when I sent her the invitation to be one of the guests, she, she responded, I see you, Charmaine. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. what we have to do, right? We have to mm -hmm. see each other and really commit to that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, be, be you and, and people will see you if you see yourself. I share on that. I can talk about that too. Because I was, if you don't see the space, create it, innovate. You know, um, that's something, that's another thing that we, that I feel, another lesson I've learned as a tap dancer is because, you know, we weren't typically, you know, now we're getting invited into spaces, you know, more, more frequently, but, you know, um, we have to, you know, we've been creating our, our, our own work and, and so, you know, innovate where you can, you know. Um, Make the space. Make a space. We fixing to close out. Boo! I don't want to end. But Stephanie has to go be with some chillins. Well, I, I heard he just shut the door and is doing well. <laughs> what? No, but in, indeed, I know they're doing well. They're doing. <laughs> Everybody, yeah. come on back. Come on back, Kimani. Come on back, Nick. Please. Uh, do your thing, Kimani and Nick. I, I'm talking. I'm talking. You go. That's all right. Listen, thank you. Yes. D raise your glasses, please. Wait, raise your glasses. Nick, where's yours? Raise your glasses. Powerful women. Thank you. It is inspiring. Much needed in this time of COVID. Um, uh, thank you all for being here with us. And again, please, in the chat, maybe Nick, will you put it in again? We have the link to these amazing artists that you can find out their information and support them. We have, again, our information there if you want to donate. Awesome. And we are looking, wish list, everybody. We want to create a blog. We need a, a Zoom account money. We're at the kind of the foundational level of building this, and we want this to go on long term. I want this to become the story core. We have the dance core, right? That Come on. Something that archives. So these are important stories that get to be held for generations. So again, thank you all for being here. Anything you both want to say, Charmaine, Nick? Again, thank um, you. I'm just that I want everyone to lift their cameras to open up so we can say our final goodbye that Charmaine's going to lead. Whoop, whoop. Open your cameras. Oh, look at all the beautiful people. Oh, look at all the beautiful people. Come Yay. on with it. Oh, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Stacy, I see you. Sorry. Yay, Tore. Hey, Tore. I see you. Renee, I see you. We yeah. see you. Jennifer, where is hey. your face, Jen? We see you. <laughs> Where's Alifu? Alifu, I only see your picture. Come on in. Come on in. I see my husband. You're still at work. <laughs> Baba Goma. Yes. Alifu! Yes. 
Yes, beautiful people, Dewani. Yes, <laughs> Lisa. Woo, Linda Bromberg, where are you? I lost you. Oh, come on in, people. Say hi. So just a reminder, we're taking a little break next week because it's the holiday week, but we will be back. Stoney, there you are. Laura Marquez. Yay, Laura. <laughs> we will be back. Toria. Hug, Toria. Hug, hug, hug. That's Ayadele's wife. <laughs> Toria, can you give her a hug for me after, for real? Uh, a scoot. <laughs> we come back week after next. Oh my gosh, why can't I remember who's coming the week after next? That's shame on me. Nick? <laughs> Somebody? <laughs> That's a shame. Ava! Isn't it Tiffany? Isn't Ava, it Tiffany, Tiffany is it? Mar Roberts. Yeah. It's Tiffany Ray Fisher and Jamar Roberts in two weeks. Hi, Kate Mattingly. Yes, that's Caters. Yes. Is oh my Kate? gosh, I haven't seen you in a million and one years. So this is this. Hi, Connie. Please, you all. Linda, I see you. Hug. Hug, Montclair. Hug. <laughs> all right. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Bye. Everybody. Hi, Lee Sprenner. Bye. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Thank you, Charmaine. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick.